Good evening. This is my first time up here. Woohoo! Right. Was not originally planning on coming here, but I decided, you know, why sit in my room rotting? So I came out here to watch friends, and then for some reason I decided, hey, I'm just signing up for and now I'm following this. Woohoo! Yeah, good luck with that, right? <laughs> good job. So, I guess the main reason I wanted to sign up is I was a Marine, my dad was a Marine, Woo my mom was a Marine, and uh, there's a bunch of stories I got from the Marines, and I've always wanted to share them and, you know, have enough possible deniability to go around, right? So, uh, I'm going to share some stories, but I'm not going to name names, because some of those names still know me. Um, Alright, so one of my favorite stories, and uh, Okay, this one's kind of not quite my fault, but I could have definitely helped this guy out, but it was fun. So what wound up happening is I worked in artillery. I fixed howitzers, and one of the things we always had to keep an eye on were the sights. So to keep the sights lit at night, they used tritium, which is a radioactive gas, because it emulates, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, it's like, we really need to keep these little sights lit. So let's use radioactive gas. <laughs> But uh, that's because lights, you know, are easily picked up by night vision goggles, and you don't want that. So the thing is, is the guys who fire the guns, sometimes they don't quite know what they're doing. And one of them, a gentleman whose name I'm not going to mention, was told to go get some tritium batteries. Now, I don't know if you can think radioactive gas and batteries and assume those will actually work. No, there's no such thing about it. So they sent him to Sergeant. Oops, I'm it. Okay. So they sent him to his sergeant, and his sergeant's the kind of person who will happily mess with you and will do any kind of dare for money. So they sent him there and say, hey, you know, we get some trivial batteries. He's going to to a sergeant and ask for them. His sergeant takes one of those little plastic cups that you can catch up in, puts two AA batteries in there, <laughs> cracks a chem lights, dumps it in there, hands it to him, and says, Take this back to your gun, don't spill it. And then hits him on the back hard enough to cause him to spill it on his hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude runs back to his gun, hands glowing, batteries glowing, goes, I got the tritium battery, Sergeant. And his other sergeant goes, oh no, did you get that on your hands? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where you want to. Oh no, okay. Uh, you're gonna die. <laughs> Because he believes he has radioactive material on his hands. And they just start, okay, okay, lay on the ground, lay on the ground. Go, no, not near us, go over here, lay on, lay on the ground. <laughs> lay on the ground, and they make him hold these batteries over his chest. And he's starting to shake, so they're still like, more like, no, no, don't spill it, Lord. You're going to open the ring now if you put it on the ground, and they'll have to decapitate you, too. So he's sitting there shaking and crying. and. One of them runs over to the radio and goes, hey, we need a corpsman over on gun two. <laughs> Why is that? Oh, you know, last corporal so-and-so got tritium battery juice on his hands. Now, our corpsmen are obviously trained in what to do if the radioactive gas actually escapes, so they know that this is complete BS. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why two of them grab the medical bags and sprint over to my gun. No, 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 it's all over you. Okay, drag him further away. So we grab him by the shoulders and drag him another hundred yards from the guns. And so they just sit there, he's crying, and they're like, okay, don't worry, we got a medevac chopper on the way. It's gonna be here soon. Okay, now just take really shallow breaths. You're not going to give me more in the system than you already have. No, stop crying, shallow breaths. <laughs> so, they, uh, they wait for a bit, and they went over and they're like, we have bad news, they went to the wrong unit. <laughs> and uh, so he's crying, he's so worried, he's about to die. Finally, like, hey, uh, Lance Corporal, yeah? Tritium's a gas, and those are double A's. You motherfuckers! <laughs> so, that was fun. He uh, was displeased by that. <laughs> but since that's not the only thing he fell for, we uh, really didn't care. Um, another story I have, and this one isn't quite personal to mine, but uh, one of the Marines I knew 
was stationed in Hawaii uh, on recruiting duty. Now, this is obviously a prime station. I mean, you get barracks, you get fruit from the chow hall, and you get to be in Hawaii for free. At the same time, anyone who's been in the military on recruiting duty will tell you that recruiting duty sucks. So, these two Marines got bored one day and decided to have a little bit of fun. Now, this was long before cell phones. This was quite a bit of time before cell phones were a major thing. So what they did was they locked up the recruiting office. Now, I don't know how many people have gone to your recruiting office, but a lot of them had those dummies with the dress uniform for whatever service they are, looking all snazzy and kind of go, oh, look at what we wear, oh, let's make them awesome, all ladies are all men looking. So they take this recruiting dummy with them, and they drive out to this really nice tourist attraction waterfall. And they go to the top. And when I say tourist attraction, I mean it's a nice little tourist attraction. There are boats that come by every 30 minutes and go by this waterfall because of how beautiful it is. And they wait. And the boat comes by. And they stand there at the top of the waterfall in plain view. One of them holds a dummy like this. And the other one just starts punching the hell out of this dummy. <laughs> and then he switches, throws it to the other guy, and the other guy punches the hell out of this dummy. And then on the count of three, they chuck it off the waterfall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the cops got called for that one. Came tearing out there, arrested them both, dredged the waterfall, found the dummy, which had broken an arm, realized what had happened, and the only thing the cops could do was charge them for littering. <laughs> they got their asses chewed, but they thought it was worth it. That kind of literary, I would say. Um, okay, so one other story that's, was about... That's seven minutes, just so you know. Oh, that's seven minutes? Yep. All right, you know, I'll hold the story for a good time. Thank you.